In 2017, Ying Ying was enrolled at the University of Illinois while she was visiting the United States from China. She had a promising future ahead of her as she was considered a brilliant scholar and had won several awards in China before coming to the U.S. She was looking for a place to live as she attended school and had scheduled an appointment with a leasing agent on June 9th of 2017. After missing that appointment and not returning any calls from friends or family, Ying Ying was reported missing to the police. And then uh, this is Eric. Yeah, Detective Eric Cyperson. Detective with the uh, University Police. Okay. Um, we are investigating the disappearance of uh, Ms. Ying Ying. Um, because we are in my offices and it's late at night, I'm going to read you your advice of rights. Okay. The local police department brought in the help of the FBI, and the search was on for Ying Ying. Thanks to a surveillance camera near the area she went missing, they noticed that a black Saturn car passed Ying Ying as she waited for the bus. That same car would turn around and come back three minutes later, and she would get into it. That type of car was considered rare for that area, and after searching through the owners of that type of vehicle, they came across a man named Brent Christensen. Our Investigation, as I'm sure Joel probably told you, is the disappearance of this woman, uh, this young lady, and uh, the most viable tip that we had referred to a black uh, Saturn Astra. Um, so I, I, that's why he came to talk to you the other day. Um, do you remember what you told him? And I'm not going to hold you to it if there are certain details yeah. you forget. Uh, so they came. They were just checking out all of the Saturn Astros in the area. Mm -hmm. I know it's a pretty rare car, so I will do short lists. Um, yeah. He asked where my wife and I were during, I think it was two to three on Friday. And I was either playing video games on my computer or taking an afternoon nap. So. I looked into certain things to try and see if I could get some kind of info for an alibi. I sent some texts around that time, but none exactly between two and three. Mm -hmm. um, I let them come in the apartments. They searched for stuff. I let them come in the car. They searched for stuff there. Um, that was pretty much it. Okay. Brent was a former PhD student at the same university that Ying Ying had been attending. Back in 2017, Brent had gone to see a mental health counselor claiming that he wanted to kill people and that he researched serial killers online. After an evaluation, the counselor decided that Brent was not in immediate need of hospitalization, but that would be the first and the last appointment that Brett ever had. Uh, would you uh, graduate in? Uh, master's in physics. In physics? Yes. Well, that's way smarter than me. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm assuming that's over at the U of I there? Yes. Okay. Um, you said your wife was out of town. Um, yes. The guys mentioned something about Wisconsin. Correct. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. You guys are originally from there? Or is yes. That? Okay. Um, do you know what day she was uh, in Wisconsin? Um, like late Thursday night, early Friday morning until Sunday evening. Wait, what? I'm sorry, I may have missed her. Oh, no, she has a job already. Um, she was on a vacation. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing some old friends up in Wisconsin, so. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Um, you mentioned that you thought you possibly sent text messages between you know, the hours of two or three, so you weren't able to find any. Um, That's correct. Do you, do you recall um, any text message they sent that day, or like, were there Oh, yeah, there times? were one. I, I actually left, well, I didn't, they didn't look through the phone, but I was showing them texts on my phone. Okay. Like, someone sent me a text at like 1.30, I responded at like 3.45 or something okay. like that. So, um, there are texts around it, yeah, but not, maybe not. Not exactly between two and three. three, and that's why I think I was probably lying down and sleeping, just because, like, you know, especially now, I'll typically do stuff in the morning, look for jobs, play with mm -hmm. you, and, like, 
Um, was that kind of pattern of kind of looking for jobs, um, kind of having a little relaxation after graduation, was that typical of the, the entire week prior? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, do you remember specifically if you sent any applications out online or if you visited any places on uh, Friday, throughout the week? Um, throughout the week? Uh, I haven't had any in-person interviews. I had a phone interview on Thursday. And... Anything on Friday? The first thing the FBI agents do is to see if Brent has any alibis around the time that Yingying went missing. Right now, he is just one of several people being interviewed who all have a black Saturn, but the only difference is Brent does not have a solid alibi. Brent claims his wife was in another state while he was sitting home playing video games. Do you have any questions for me before... Um... um why am I under suspicion? Is it just my car or is there anything else? Uh, I mean, that's, you know, a large portion. Uh, I mean, it is uh, a very unique car. Um, like I said, our search warrant is, uh, is just for the car. Yeah. So we can, be, yeah. you know, um, look into it. We can, of course, see what we can find. And, of course, you could also turn around and exonerate it completely. I mean, okay. what a very rare car. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, how long were you at the U of I? Did you undergrad there as well? No, I did my undergrad at U of Madison. Okay. And I came here in 2013. Okay. I was initially in the PhD program, but decided I didn't want a PhD, so I just kind of left the master's. Got it. Um, I like the campus. It's all right. Not too bad. It's all right. Uh, do, you, do you meet your wife there? Or? No, we uh, actually grew up in the same hometown and didn't really know each other until end of high school. So, we both moved to Madison when I went to undergrad. Cool. Uh, did she study here as well? No, she did not. They are using a basic interrogation tactic by asking Brent multiple questions that he would have no need to lie about. This establishes a baseline for the FBI so they can gauge his body language while he is telling the truth and then compare it later on in the interview when they think he is lying. They are trained to notice things like a change in speech patterns direction of the suspect's eyes, and any other body language signs that most people will show when they are lying. Yeah, the, uh, when we were talking about uh, Friday, uh, the day in question on the night, uh, yeah. can you remember, you, you said that you played video games all day on Friday? Yeah. Is it just between the time period that he's asking about or just literally all day? Literally all day. Um, at the moment, not really hanging out with too many people or talking to too many people. Um, my wife and the girl I talked to, um, she was busy. My wife's on town, so it's like, well, I'm alone today. So, uh, yeah. Did you, you didn't do a cruise on campus or anything? I did on Saturday, but I mean, Getting a little stir crazy, just decided to go for a yeah. drive on Saturday. But um, did you go out to eat or anything? Go like places? No, I didn't go out to eat. Uh, what other vehicles do you guys own? We you own, own a, uh, a 2000 Camaro as well. That's right. Look, you know that we didn't bring you all the way up here to talk about video games and what you had for lunch that day. Yep. Why do you think that we brought you up here? Because the car I own was seen picking up a girl that's missing. Yeah. Yeah. So who was driving that car other than you on, on Friday night? On Friday the, the night? It's, it, you're driving your car on the night. More Does is anybody else have access to that car? No one has access to this car. Okay. So how many sets of keys do we have that car? Two. And where were they on the Friday? Uh, one. I would have had one, and my wife would have had one. And hers were in Wisconsin, right? Yeah. yeah. And what do you keep on that keychain? You keep both sets of keys, right? One for the Camaro, or do you have separate sets? Um, I have one keychain, but sometimes I take the Camaro keys off. But it's gone. Now they need to make sure that nobody else could have possibly been driving Brent's car. This is where not talking and requesting a lawyer would have been extremely beneficial. 
because Brent could have said that he leaves the car unlocked with the keys in the visor, or perhaps he leaves a set of keys under a rock near his front door. Any one of these excuses would have given his lawyers a great defense strategy in court by saying that someone could have stolen his car, committed the crime, and returned it while he was playing video games or sleeping. Now, let's talk specifically about Friday. Okay. You went to school for how long at the U of I? Since 2013. Since 2013. Yeah. So you're very familiar with our campus? Not really. I never really um, talked to anyone. So. so you're kind of a loner? Yeah. But specifically on that day, okay, well, you, you originally told the agents that came to your apartment that you just played video games all day long. He didn't leave the apartment. Yeah. But it's fair to say that we know that that's not true, correct? Why would I lie? I mean, I maybe there's some misunderstanding why, why we're here. Because, like I said, we're, we're, we're not just looking for a needle in a haystack. I'm sorry, let me take that back. We are looking for a deal on a haystack. Yeah. But my point is, you're, you're making it sound like we're just, we're, we just randomly came across your vehicle of the 1,400 Astros that are in the state of Illinois. I have so many. So, so what would have happened that day that brings us to you? Probably that I live in Champaign. I mean, I've never seen one before, but an Astro. So... Okay. No, well, believe me when I say that the full weight and force of the FBI is going to descend on that vehicle. Okay. And all that entails. Okay. Right now, my primary concern and why I've been out till midnight, and these guys have been out till midnight every single night, is we're trying to find this girl. It's raining outside, it's nasty. She's a foreign student, who's only been here for a few weeks. I want to find her. I'm asking for help. I know. I... I mean... I've got her getting into your car. I need to know why. Now it's time to bluff Brent, but they have to be careful how they do it. They have already mapped out what direction he would have come from and where he would have gone. So now they need to make Brent think they have him in his car on surveillance cameras all over town on the day Ying Ying went missing. There's Brent, I need, I need to know why she's getting into your car and I need to know where she went. If we can help her, we need it done now because we need, we need to move on from this. It, it's been like six days now. I don't know what to say. Sorry. And you've been at the U of I for how long? Three years. Two years. And that you know what we do? I work in the detectives bureau at the U of I, and you know what we have access to? Cameras? Do you think that we're not going to track a vehicle all over campus? We control kiosks to bus stops. We can look in buses. We can look in every building out on the streets, and you're telling me that I didn't see you driving your car on Goodwin, that I didn't see you driving down Wright Street and turning on right in front of parking where everybody pays your tickets and driving down University to Goodwin and heading south. And then you see her standing on that corner in that shade tree, didn't you? That's where you first saw her. And then you turned, you turned on Clark, and we still have cameras. I've seen the videos, but I didn't see me. You've seen what we've allowed you to see. Can I see this stuff that you're talking about? Do you think that we brought you up here to show you video? We want to we understand why you did it. Yeah. We want to understand why you stopped her to pick her up. Was it to give her a ride? Are you afraid to tell us 
that you gave her a ride, maybe you wanted to make a couple bucks as an Uber driver, and she told you I had to go get, I had to go sign a lease at One North, and you're like, oh, I know where that's at. I'll drop you off. If you're afraid to tell us that you gave her a ride someplace, we can work with you there. But I know that you picked her up. I know you did. I saw you in your shirt, arms fully extended. Where did you drop her off at? She was looking for a ride. She had missed her bus. She told you she was going to one north, so where did you drop her off at? Another tactic interrogators like to use is to give their suspect an alternative way out by suggesting an alternate scenario that may have taken place. In this case, they tell Brent that they do not believe he committed the crime. Instead, they think that he picked up the victim and drove her to her destination. Brent will now believe that he has to explain why Ying Ying got into his car and the FBI agent has given him the perfect explanation. I did pick a girl up. I don't remember where. Okay. I saw her picture. I don't think it was her, though. Do you remember the girl's name that you picked up? No, she was talking very broken English. Okay. Tell us about what happened. What time of day was that? Early afternoon. I don't really remember. Okay. I was just driving around. Um, I saw a girl and she was very distressed. Okay. So I stopped my car and looked at her. Okay. I asked her if she needed help and talk to her for a little bit, not much. I gave her a short ride to Cleveland Locks. Okay. She freaked out and got out. Okay. That's all it was. Was this when you got on the north side of the railroad tracks on Goodwin? When you went across the university and you drove on north? And you let her out by the hospital or by the railroad tracks? Or where did you let her out at? I don't really remember specifics. Um, was it close to where you picked her up? Yeah, it was relatively close. It was in a residential area. Okay. So I'd never really been over there before. I had no reason to. Okay. I didn't. When you say she freaked out, what did, what did she do? Did she did she start throwing things at you? Did she scratch you? It looks like you have a scratch on your right bicep there. Is that oh, from... I scratched myself in my sleep. That's from me. Okay. So... So she just freaked out. So she's sitting in the front passenger seat of your vehicle? Okay. Has no. anybody else sat in that front passenger seat since so she got out of the car? Probably. Okay. I want to find this girl because I know she's alone and scared out there and we yeah. don't have any contact with her. So you said you picked her up. Yeah. You went a couple blocks away to a residential area. You remember if you went north? I went north for sure. I mean, so I, I'm serious when I say I was I'm pretty antisocial. I pretty much just go to Loomis area, that park them up there, and then go home. Okay. But I knew my general area, mm -hmm. and I don't remember exactly where I was. Okay, but where, do you, where did you drop her off at? There's a residential area, I guess a little north of Loomis. Um, Brent tries to make a smart play by saying that he dropped Ying Ying off in a residential area. A residential area will most likely have no cameras, whereas somewhere within the city, it would be far easier to find surveillance camera footage of Brent dropping off Ying Ying. They realize what he is doing, so they begin to ask questions about the route he took. The same street you picked her up from, right? Yeah, north of that place. That would be Goodwin Avenue that you were on. Okay. So, and you're facing north. So she she showed me her phone, and I was like, "Broken English." She said, "I'm going here." Um, so she was showing your phone like a maps program. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I saw it was north, so I started driving north. And she said something like, "Turn left after a couple blocks." Um, maybe she said something else because that's really when she started freaking out. And she went out of the car, get out, tried to pull in the door. It was locked because the car had locks. Mm -hmm. I'm locked and she got out, does it. Where were the streets at, do you remember? No, I don't remember. Um, do you remember where she was wearing? <clears throat> No, I don't. Um, she had a backpack. Uh, 
jeans. Does she have anything on, on her head? Was she wearing sunglasses? Does she have tennis shoes on or flip flops? I didn't notice flip flops or high heels or anything, so it was probably normal shoes. Um. They begin to gather even more evidence by having Brent describe Ying Ying. They want to eliminate the argument that Brent could have picked up another female on that same day, and it was not Ying Ying. What was her ethnicity? You said she had trouble speaking English. Well, she, she was Asian. She was Asian. She was Asian. Okay. Um, what was? What do you think? How old do you think she was? was she, do you think she was a grad student, undergrad? Was she um, I guess it was about twenty. Okay. I guess it was about twenty. Um, her hair length ish here. Um, uh, I have trouble telling. Asian people apart from one another. Sorry. Well, you would remember no, this very specific, though, because when you pulled up to her, you rolled your window down, and she leaned into your car, so you were looking right at her face. And what does she have on her face? What does she have on her head? You were looking right at her. I don't remember. You don't remember? No, I mean, even, so I taught many, many semesters here, and a lot of the students were Asian. Okay. Was she wearing glasses? Did she have a ball cap on? She, she might have been wearing glasses, I don't remember that. So. What did she tell you whenever you rolled down the window and you were chatting with her? You said she looked distressed. Um, that's my stuff. Do you remember specifically what yeah, uh, she said to you? Um, I asked her something on the phone. Um, Which would she say to that? Uh, she said, I'm late, I need to get somewhere or something like this. I was not exactly out of it, but just kind of like, oh, I'm going to help this random person. So, I'm in the first place. Um, so she said she was running late for something? Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you're right, because again, I was just turning around. Mm -hmm. So, did she say where she was trying to get to? Uh, you mentioned the. Um, Show me the phone. Not with the mask. She said she had a meeting with her professor. So. Brent claims that he took a wrong turn, and that scared Ying Ying, so she demanded that he let her out. The detective on the right is looking at the city map, trying to figure out why the directions Brent is giving them make no sense at all. The detective on the left also realizes this, so he asks Brent to explain what's going on. So if you would have turned left there after university, you would have driven right by the hospital. You would have been south of the tracks, and you, you, the very next thing you see, you're behind the hotel, right? You see the hospital. I see. Yeah, you said I, you I, went to a residential neighborhood. Yeah, when, you turned, when she said turn left. I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm working on yeah. it. I know the area very well. I don't think I drove past the hospital, so I don't remember train tracks. But I mean, it's easy to forget. But so where? So you said you kicked her out of the car in a residential neighborhood. She got out of the car. I think. Oh, she got out of the car. She wanted to get out. Like that's why I let her out. Because oh, she was freaking out. Yeah. Okay. And she was saying because things you didn't understand. Because you, uh, she, she thought you took a wrong turn. Yeah, and sometimes I don't know something like that. So. Yeah, when she tried to open the door, but again, it was locked. It's my car, auto locks. Um, obviously, when I get out, I'm not going to keep someone I barely know in my car who doesn't want to be in there. You know, I'm not the girl. Um, so, her up. That was the last I saw her. Really? Okay. Yeah. Guess let's start where you think you picked her up at. That's a good question. Um, well, oh, it's Lewis so Lab. Is so Goodwin is there? Green Springfield. So this is right here. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember driving around here. Um, there's 
north of Springfield, so I guess I was kind of in this area, maybe. Yeah, like over here. I remember being by the quad. Do you remember driving by Bright Street, where the little Circle K is, and the big Beckman Institute that is a landmark on a university? Um, I don't think I drove past Beckman. That doesn't ring a bell. I've been to Beckman a couple times. I don't know what it looks like from the other side, but I have had to go there a few times. Um, I guess there's a Circle K right over here. I don't remember that. I don't remember coming up Bright Street, driving across University. Coming down Goodwin. You see her standing there underneath that shade tree at the bus stop. You take that quick left. You run a box around her. Now you come back up north Goodwin and you pull up right next to her. You talk to her for less than a minute. And she gets in her car. She was at my passenger side, so I would go this way. Mm -hmm. um, again, I was driving around a decent amount beforehand. I don't remember exactly where I go for yeah, we, so you were definitely driving all over campus, and you were by yourself, and you weren't playing video games all day. So why would you tell us that? Why would you tell the FBI that comes to your house that I you were Saturday? I don't know. You didn't accept the days. I mean, I thought I was doing it Saturday. So what did you think that those two agents were at your house talking to you about? Brent claims that he mixed up his days, thinking that when he picked up Ying Ying, it was on a Saturday, not a Friday, and that's why it seems like he was lying. The detective makes a great point by saying that when he was interviewed at his home about a missing female being picked up, why didn't he say anything about picking up a female matching the same description, even if it was a different day? When they came over. Friday. That's why. I mean, Friday is a day? Or Friday? Or they're there to ask you if you picked up an Asian female and gave her a ride. About Friday. I mean, they were asking me about Friday between two and three. So I told them. I mean, maybe I got my days mixed up. You know, I said a little bit ago. I thought I was doing this Saturday. But you didn't bother to tell them. Oh, I didn't. I played video games all day Friday, uh, uh, detective. But I actually did pick up a female on Saturday. You, you didn't feel the need to give them that information. And it might be important. I mean, all right, so you go northbound through University. Where do you go next? Do you remember? I turned left, so it looks like I did go past, past University. Um, this must be the residential area I was talking about then. So I must have went past University. Yeah, for sure. So I drove a little more than that. So I must have turned left somewhere up here into this area. And that's where I would have dropped. So just for, you were showing the area of Hill Street and was that Beasley? Um, I don't know exactly where in here I was, but I mean, just looking at this, yeah, I mean, if this is good when um, Springfield's right here, I was in this area here. I'm assuming this is a residential area. Do you remember seeing a, a grade school off to your right? Did you get that far north where you would have saw Martin Luther King Junior High or elementary school right there? I, I don't know. I'm going to ask a personal question. Don't take it the wrong way. Is, um, you, you mentioned your wife went on vacation with another friend. Um, you mentioned that uh, there's another guy she hangs out with. You mentioned there's another girl you hang out with. Do you guys have a we're we're very open relationship? relationship? Okay. Yeah, I have a girlfriend. She has a boyfriend as well. Okay. Um, now it's time to find a motive for the crime. They have a lot of information at this point, and it's very obvious that Brent is hiding something, but they still need a reason as to why Brent would do something like this. They remember him saying something about how both he and his wife have a significant other, and they are both open about it. He also said that his wife was on vacation with her boyfriend, and his girlfriend was busy on that same day, so he may have felt angry and alone. Does she go to Wisconsin with a boy or another girlfriend? Guy. How did that make you feel when she went away for the weekend, this long weekend with that guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's okay, those, that, those are normal human feelings. Mm -hmm. Did you feel hurt? Well, yeah, but I mean, 
she had this intent for a while. Um, but still, she's your wife, and it's tough. You know, even if you're in an open relationship like that, where it's tough to see somebody you care about that you love to go someplace else with somebody else and not include you. Mm-hmm. And I get that, man. Is that why you were driving around campus all day, pretty much all day long on Friday? Because you missed her? Just trying to clear my head. Yeah, more or less. That's understandable. Yeah. Not stir crazy, I was lonely. Um, yeah, that was Saturday. Saturday. So. Did you talk to any other girls that day? No. Did you talk to any other girls on Saturday? Or did you stay home Saturday? No. Once it's again, fun. days mixed up. Okay. Yeah, yeah but, uh, uh, I'm not trying to trivia on the days. When I was driving, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in a clear way then. When I was driving around, she was the only person I talked to. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. If I recognized her, I would have told the agents that came on Monday or Tuesday, whenever it was, that it was her. Okay. Light. Because I knew she was missing. Um, I picked up an Asian girl. I thought she was one twenty. So, and from there, you went north on University. Um, she was trying to point out directions in her phone. Yeah. Uh, you turned left into the neighborhood. She started panicking. And got up. And that's all that happened. And then I went on. By this point, Brent has to think that the FBI agents believe that he committed the crime, yet he remains calm and shows no sign of resistance or anger. If you put an innocent person in that same chair, they would become very angry that someone would think they are capable of such a crime. Instead, Brent does his best to explain why he is not the killer without ever being accused of any crimes. We have 600 Chinese students that have volunteered to look for her. What I can tell you is that we will find her. Now, when we find her is up to you. Because you know, and we know, that she didn't just get out of your car. So we need to know where she is now so that we can move forward from this. But if you maintain that she just got out of the car and walked away, it's very difficult for us to move forward. Were, were you hoping for um, just kind of like a quick tryst with her or see if she, you know, trying, trying to pick her up? I mean, that would have been nice, but... Do, do you have... I'm going to ask you a weird question. And you know, a lot of us have fetishes. Uh, how would you describe your relationship with your wife. Are you guys into certain things? Do you like porn? Do you like... Um, we're pretty vanilla together. Um, but... Yeah, that's pretty much it. We have some stuff in our apartment. I mean, do you have like certain types of people that you have fantasies about that you might want to hook up with? You know, not particularly, no. Oh, is that how big? Well, we missed the back of the thing. Okay. There. I mean, have you ever, like, um, you do realize like, everything you tell us, we fact check regardless of what you tell us. So, mm-hmm. like, stuff like uh, YouTube videos that you've seen okay. regarding Asian women. Do you like videos of Asian women? The like Korean women? Like K pop songs and stuff? I mean Maybe. I like okay, so I like all types of women. Okay. And that's that's the truth. So I don't have an Asian fetish. But something drew your eye to her. Because you see her you were cruising all over and yeah. If she was truly distressed, I mean, there was an e-phone stand right behind her. She could have pushed that button and, and got help. And she didn't ask you for help, per se. She asked what she needed to get to. She was late for something. Yeah. And that's so you offered to give her a ride. Mm-hmm. 
They would eventually outright accuse Brent of lying to them and demand that he tell them what really happened, but he would continue to deny any knowledge of the crime. The FBI would be forced to release Brent due to lack of evidence, but they had one more trick up their sleeve. They would approach Brent's wife and ask her to prove that Brent was innocent by wearing a hidden microphone that would pick up their conversation. One day, Brent could not help himself and he told his wife everything. And I get that, that sometimes people lie to me. I don't get upset over that. I'll take it personal. But you and I know that here and now, what we're talking about, you're not even entirely true. And at this point, we're trying to help you. We're trying to help her. We're trying to help her family. I don't think that you're a bad person. Something happened, though, and something got out of control. And we need to know where she's at. Because the longer she's missing, we're going to find the answers to all these questions, whether we do it now or we have to do it two weeks from now. But we're, we're going we're gonna to put this behind us and everybody's going to move forward. And this is a time for you to be entirely honest with us. She, 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 her family is coming to China to look for their daughter. So, do you have any sisters? Yeah. What, wouldn't, wouldn't, if, if your sister was missing, even if, if it was because of you, wouldn't you want to help for the closure for that family, for, for your loved ones? Are you afraid, are you afraid to tell me if you did? Because it, it seems like you're, you're trying to think, instead of just answering the question, you're trying to think about three steps forward well, of where I'm going with it. And I think I've demonstrated enough, I've shared enough with you that you know that I know that you, you didn't drop her off in that, in that neighborhood. On the day of the crime, Brent was posing as an undercover officer as he picked up Ying Ying from the bus stop. He assaulted Ying Ying, then took her life with a baseball bat. After that, he would dispose of the body by spreading it out over multiple locations, hoping that would decrease the chance that he would get caught. Brent was convicted of the crime, and he received life in prison without the possibility of parole. He has yet to disclose the location of the body. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative, and if you did, please think about subscribing to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.